Hi and welcome to Data Test. Some time ago I thought to myself, look, I'm using this Huawei Mate 10 Pro from 3 years ago and it still sort of holds up. But what if I want to upgrade? What would I have to buy to get a better phone? And how much would it cost me? I knew that Pixel 4a is a pretty good mid-range phone. There is iPhone SE as well, Xiaomi Poco F2 Pro and of course OnePlus Nord. There are more Chinese brands but I didn't want to import from China. I was watching a lot of reviews and making research and I found out that Google Pixel 4a and OnePlus Nord, both very good devices, are not all that much better than what I already have. I mean they have better camera and improved battery life and stuff, but it wasn't that good to spend 400 euros on. On the other hand, Poco F2 Pro is a very powerful device and sure better than Mate and Pro in every way. And of course iPhone SE. It has a very dated design, but the performance and camera are awesome, plus it has IP certification and wireless charging. Then I settled on iPhone SE, and when I was about to press the order button, I found something interesting. Samsung Galaxy S10 Lite. I knew that S10 Lite existed, but I kinda didn't care. Like, I thought it has a weak CPU, not great camera and cheap build. And I was wrong, and that's the reason why I'm making this video. I think that for under 400 euros, S10 Lite is a very good phone to buy. Now let's actually talk about the phone itself, and I will start with how it looks. There is a huge 6.7 inch Super AMOLED screen on the front with pretty small center the hole punch. Bezels are thinner than I expected, chin is a bit thicker but still very impressive considering this is not a flagship device. Frame is made of aluminium, but it has a very shiny layer on top of it. I have to say I kinda like it. USB-C port is on the bottom alongside a mono speaker. Now we came to the part which I was a bit afraid of before buying. Rear panel is made of glastic, which is a fancy name for some sort of improved plastic. I thought that it would feel cheap, but actually I can't tell the difference between this and glass, except maybe it is not so cool to touch. I would only suggest you to buy some brighter color, because on the black version there will be a ton of fingerprints. This white which I have here is in my opinion pretty nice with its rainbow effect. Also plastic scratches way more easily than glass, so a case would be a great idea. Overall phone feels nice in the hand and yeah it is quite large but the space is at least well used. You may notice that unfortunately there is no headphone jack, so when you want to listen to music, Bluetooth is the way to go. You can also use adapter for wired headphones or USB-C headphones. Samsung was kind enough to include USB-C earphones in the box. While I'm talking about packaging, let's talk about other stuff that was and wasn't included. Phone came in a nice black box, inside there was some documentation, SIM tray tool, USB-C to USB-C cable, earphones, phone itself and 25W fast charger. Now, this phone is capable of charging at 45W, but unfortunately you will have to buy the right wall adapter for that. Oh, and there was no case included, at least not in the European version. Let's talk about the display for a moment. 6.7 inch Super AMOLED panel with FHD plus resolution and 20 to 9 aspect ratio. Display also supports HDR10+. Only thing which is missing is high refresh rate, but that is not a big deal at this price point. Display is, well, just awesome. Colors look nice, it is really bright and very responsive. A small hole punch is not a problem for me, but if you don't like this type of design, just probably don't buy it because you will be annoyed always when you look at it. But again, I think it's not a big deal and it looks more than fine. Everything what I have said so far was let's say normal for 400 euros phone. Now we come to the more interesting part. Galaxy S10 Lite is using Snapdragon 855 in all markets, so no Exynos here. Yes, it is last gen processor, but still way more powerful than something like Snapdragon 765G or 730G. Though it doesn't support 5G network, so keep that in mind. Now, in my country, 4G speeds are already very good, so the lack of 5G is not a problem for me. But if you see yourself taking advantage of 5G network, you should probably consider OnePlus Nord instead. Back to the specs. 
You can buy this phone with 6 or 8 gigs of RAM and 128 or 512 gigs of storage. Overall performance is I think stellar for the price. There is no lag, no stutter, you can play games like Call of Duty and PUBG Mobile on max settings and have no problems whatsoever. Phone is running Android 10 with Samsung UI 2.5. Samsung software skin is way better than it used to be. It is still a bit too much for me. Yes, there are many great features added over stock Android, but still I find it a bit confusing sometimes and I still prefer the look of stock Android, but that's just me. If you're looking for a feature-rich device, this may be really good for you. I won't go through all the features, but the most important ones are, for example, always on display, pop-up view, ability to turn off fast charging in order to save battery health, customizable themes and different looks, and many more. This phone does have an optical under-display fingerprint sensor, but you can also use the face unlock option, though it uses only the front camera, no other sensors. Fingerprint sensor is, and there is no way around it, just not good. It's unreliable, not very fast, and it is too low on screen to reach, at least for me. I really wish that smartphone manufacturers will return to the rear or side mounted fingerprint sensors. Luckily, face unlock is an option as well, and it works pretty good, but in this era of face masks, it is not the most practical thing to use. Earlier I talked about the huge display and the powerful CPU. So how is the battery life? Honestly, it's very impressive. This phone has 4500 mAh battery, and it can fast charge at up to 45 watts, which is nice. Now about the battery life itself. With normal use, that means Bluetooth turned on, Wi-Fi or mobile data are also turned on and not gaming all day long, I am getting about 2 days of battery life, no problems. 3 days would be hard to achieve, but if you don't use your phone all that often, it may be possible. With gaming and recording videos, watching YouTube, you can kill a battery in one day, but it is not an easy task. Now we come to the last part and also one of the main reasons why I went for this phone. Camera. There are three sensors on the back. 48 megapixel main shooter which natively outputs to 12 megapixels, 12 megapixel ultra wide and 5 megapixel macro. Now none of these sensors are the best in class, but they are all more than usable. In many mid-range phones we see 8 megapixel ultra wide or 2 megapixel macro. But not here. Ultrawide camera is I think pretty good and it outputs nice images. They are sometimes oversaturated, also in dark, quality falls pretty quickly. 5 megapixel macro camera is, mm, well, not the best, but you can still use it sometimes and it is not as useless as some 2 megapixel shooters in other phones. Let's talk about the main camera. It has 48 megapixels, but you will almost never use that. 12 megapixel mode is way better and you can use HDR, which you can't in 48 megapixel mode. Photos taken during the day look nice with good dynamic range and nice colors. Sometimes they are not as detailed as I would like them to be, but overall great. In low light pictures are not as good and they lack in detail. Many times there is a lot of noise and it happened few times that pictures taken with night mode had some sort of reddish tint to them. Yes, that happened just a few times, but it forced me to take another picture, so it was a bit annoying. Oh, and I forgot to mention, you can also use the Pro mode, but only while using main lens, which is strange. Front facing camera has 32 megapixels and it is actually very good. Only I don't understand why Samsung put their option for zoom out when there is only one sensor. Other part of camera experience is video recording. This is the part where, in my opinion, this camera shines. With main lens you can record up to 4K with 60 frames per second. There are many other modes to choose from. When you drop the quality down to 1080p, you can use the super steady mode, but in my opinion it doesn't look that good and I didn't really find the use case for it. Especially when the stabilization without super steady mode is in my opinion more than good enough. 
You can record a video with ultrawright, which looks fine, but it is nothing special and it maxes out at 4K with 30 frames per second. Just like with photos, there is a pro video mode as well. You can also record 4K videos with selfie camera and they look quite amazing, that's still pretty rare in this price point. I don't really use 4K selfie video recording, but if you do, it's a good thing to have. I will show you a few samples, so you will have a better idea about the capabilities of this camera system. So, in the end, if you're looking for a sub 400 euros or dollars phone, Samsung S10 Lite is in my opinion worth considering. With its great performance, awesome battery life and quite good camera, it stacks up pretty well against other phones in this price point. Ok, that's it. Thank you so much for watching, if you enjoyed this video feel free to leave a like or maybe subscribe. Bye!